Okay, Ellie Shaman, guys. Um, try to go through this as quick as possible. Chain heal, even as Ellie. Uh, flame tongue weapon, which is a joke. 14 additional fire damage um, on your attacks. And honestly, it's better to go with like Shadow Core Oil or something. And you can only do one or the other. They don't stack. Uh, you get Healing Stream back baseline. So, you know, a little bit of splash healing. Pretty nice on a 30 second cooldown. Lightning Shield is back. Uh, the damage that it uh, suffer, you know, it puts back on melee that attack you is negligible, to be honest. But the the Maelstrom generation from it is really good. So, yeah, if you're not running Earth Shield or something, definitely good in all scenarios, especially PvP. You get Spirit Walker's Grace. Two minute cooldown, nice to have, so you can cast while moving for 15 seconds every two minutes. I guess since we're here, real quick, we'll look at these. Um, if you're going carrying, so 5% verse here, really good. Uh, you can get a third potency conduit if you go this direction, but you'll have to, you know, go with focusing mantra, which Defeating an enemy lowers the cooldown on your file. So if you're a PvE guy, um, this is a great way of getting, you know, that extra potency conduit. Um, but all around, I like this this better. Um, so for the conduit, I've gone with, for now, right, just for testing, I've gone with uh, Spiritual Resonance. So Bloodlust or any similar effects. Are going to grant you four seconds of spirit walker's grace so i went this route because i want file of patience so getting that 55 percent uh, heal over time when you use your file is really really nice three minute cooldown but you get three charges so if you're able to get out of combat even in arena then you know you'll be able to use this more than once if the game that goes on that long so back to the conduits and stuff. Yeah, so that's why I went this route. Um, other finesse conduit options would be Totemic Surge. So you just flat, you know, reduction on the cooldown of Tremor, Earthbind, and Capacitor Totem, which will scale. Uh, Ghost Wolf gives you an additional 10% movement speed for the first three seconds. Um, every 60 seconds so not bad there and then this one looks really good for pvp enemies affected by your hex deal eight percent reduced damage for eight seconds after it's removed so cool stuff but i just went with this one for testing purposes so if i lust on a dummy or something you'll see that i'll get four seconds of spirit walker's grace so you can see with healing surge uh, non crit about 4500 a crit there was 11.4 so yeah nice to have that extra 15 percent you know if you don't want any other endurance conduits but you know like i said they're all pretty good in their own ways potency conduits you'll get two here um so that would be your third you know if you go this route but get two definite here Unless you want an extra finesse conduit, but um, it's up to you. But I've gone with Vesper Totem is 100% more effective to the target that's nearest to it. Um, and I'll show you the functionality of Vesper in a bit. But yeah, pretty good conduit there. And then Lightning Bolt has a 30% chance to generate double Maelstrom. So if they're looking at the potency conduits for Ellie. Elysian Dirge is the Vesper one. Um, Earth and Sky, Earth Shock, and Elemental Blast damage are increased by 7% for each stack of fulmin Fulmination they discharge. So, really good for Burst. 
Um, and especially good, you know, if you're running Elemental Blast, which I'm not right now, but I'm sure I'll show that. So, pretty cool. Uh, nice Mythic Plus one here, Shake the Foundations. Casting Earthquake has a 15% chance to instantly cast Chain Lightning at a random enemy in the Earthquake. It's really cool. Uh, high Voltage is the one, the second one I've gone with that Lightning Bolt has a 30% chance to generate double Maelstrom. Um, this one increases your fire LE de duration by 15%. So really nice there. Depending on, you know, if you build around your fire LE and, you know, that could be really good. So those are the, the two that I've gone with. And then the Combat Meditation Vesper Totem increases your mastery by 5% for 20 seconds and occasionally expels sorrowful memories, which I showed in the Windwalker Kyrian video, but it'll put like cloudy orbs along the ground. And so, you know, if you run through one of those, it's going to increase the duration of that effect, that 5% mastery. So, by three seconds each time you run through it, you know, so really good. And, you know, you could, you could time, um, spirit walk walkers grace around that too. You know, so when you use your Vesper totem and, you know, you want to increase your, uh, duration of your mastery from that, but don't want to lose damage. Um, yeah, you could use your spirit walkers grace with that and be casting while you're moving to the next orb and to the next one. So, very cool synergy there. Endurance we haven't shown yet, so your Earth Elemental increases your max health by 20%. It's really cool, um, you know, for having kind of an extra Battle Master Trinket type of effect, and especially has a nice synergy with your file, and then especially if you take File of Patience, right? Because if you Earth Ellied first, gain 20% max health, and then pop your file, like, it's just gonna be that much stronger, you know? So, uh, this one looks like decent for PvE, um, when you're in a situation where, you know, you die, uh, reincarnation reduces the cooldown by three minutes, and whenever you reincarnate, you get Astral Shift automatically so not bad there and then refreshing waters is the one i've gone with just uh you know because those are situational and anytime i heal myself i'll get 15 percent more so uh finesse we showed yeah and we showed the potency so there are your conduit and uh your first soul bind option that you'll get Go up here near the dummies. And... So for talents, um, and I have activated war mode just because I want to show you guys the damage of lightning lasso. Um, so just keep that in mind. So I won't be using those. Like if I show a PVE rotation, I won't be using lightning lasso, but I will be gaining you know, the 25% damage from Lava Surge. So just keep that in mind, like, when you're looking at numbers. Um, and Control of Lava is really good now. Back to the way it, it was um, in the past. But anyway, talent-wise, you still have Earthen Rage. Um, you know, getting that extra nature damage, right? Whenever you just do damage. Uh, you can still have two Lava Burst Chargers if you want. Uh, static ditch Discharge. Uh, discharge ex Excess Energy from your Lightning Shield, dealing 90 damage to an enemy within 40 yards every 0.5 seconds for 3 seconds. Um, and Target, so it's sort of a smart spell so that uh, your target with Flame Shock will be preferred for this doesn't look that great to me honestly right now 
we'll see how it ends up working out and if they do more numbers passes aftershock still here so really good if you don't mind a little rng you know i've gotten quite a few procs in a row like earlier when i was messing around i got like four procs in a row from this so four back to back um full earth shocks that can be pretty insane and i'll show echoing shock to begin with cool talent um shock the target for 918 elemental damage and create an echo causing your next direct damage or healing spell to be cast a second time uh, one second later for free every 30 seconds so pretty cool there these are all the same so you can take earth shield just keep in mind that it will uh, replace your earth or your lightning shield if you're using it on yourself obviously but you can still take it you know if you don't need the damage reduction and movement speed from spirit wolf you could still take earth shield in mythic plus or something to be able to throw on your tank or your healer yeah so let's uh let's get hit by this this tank dummy here and hopefully not die <laughs> but let's get hit by him and get reduced to at least 35 percent health um so we're proccing nature's guardian and using a file and just see what it looks like here. Right. So use a file here. About 3,500. So, and that brought us up to about 80% from less than 35, I think it's around 32% or something. So really powerful heal there. And it will keep it as a flat heal to you for 20% of your health, more like a health stone. Um, so it just depends on whether you need like an upfront heal or, you know, if you play a little more carefully, you know, this will boost it so much that I feel like it's worth it. But yeah, I mean, you have that ability to make the decision for yourself. And keep in mind that we have armor kits and stuff now, um, increasing stamina. So that helps with things like file, obviously, increasing that max health. You know, because if I didn't use those, I think I'd be around 27k. But just using those two um, armor kits increased it by like 2,000 health, so. Here's lightning lasso. Yeah, you can see it was doing about 2K per tick. So very, very cool there. Um, on In BFA, I wanna say it's like, 40 or 50 percent of someone's health um watch you know tracking that buff oh uh, there i got the ascendance proc pretty cool doesn't last very long obviously but uh, flame shock echoing shock and we'll use lava burst see so you get that extra lava burst damage like a second later or maybe earth shock something really powerful that you're going to want to use uh with that so yeah very cool spell though short cooldown i love it um elemental blast 1346 so you can compare that with elemental blast it's definitely hits a lot harder and a very short cooldown. Yeah, 2144 is what ele ele Elemental Blast hit for, and it is increasing, like you get the random proc 
paste critter mastery i do like echo echoing right now um at least for pvp because you know using that with control of lava increasing your lava burst damage is uh pretty nutty can show you some uh storm alley damage just pop him I'm not tra tracking uh, Call Lightning right now, but I'll just go ahead and use it. Let's look here. Um. He's averaging on normal hits about 1850 and then critting for about 4k, averaging out to about 2k on his wind gusts, which is just his default spell. And then call lightning, um, only got three hits of that, but 2695 per hit. So yeah, still really powerful. Like, I don't know if you saw that, but. Um, overload, yeah, 7364 on an overload there. And then some 2800 to 3400 hits as well. So still really powerful. Uh, Stormkeeper, right, so Ice Fury, show you the damage of that. Just get up a flame shock. And then Ice Fury. So Ice Fury hit for 1252. So let's just use up our Frost Shocks. And you can see the burst potential there. Um, so Ice Fury 1252. And then Frost Shock 2682, 2745. Uh, 2621 and then a crit is obviously going to be huge for Ellie. So the last one crit for 6552. It really just depends on how good our Ellie's are and if Primal Elementalist is uh, worth it. You know, because like I said, you could um, pop, like in PvP, you could pop your Earth Ellie whenever your your Fire Ellie isn't up and be able to pulverize stun the target so you lose some of that functionality if you go with ice fury to gain the burst or if you feel like you need a root you know in pvp then surge of power would be a good way to do it because after you earth shock you can freeze them in place with uh frost shock you know or you can just burst with frost shock so nice situational talents here and i think they compete so I really like that row. You can see um, Fire Ellie's damage compared to um, Storm Elemental. So I just pop him. It's not going to show it in the... It's weird that it doesn't show it in the combat log but that's just the way it works because it's on my actions and he's not considered part of my actions but you can see he hits for quite a bit less obviously you know his normal hits are about you know 11 to 1150 to 1300 um, on his normal hits whereas storm ellie is going to hit for like what was it 1850 or something on his normal hits? But yeah, so Vesper Totem, um, one minute cooldown, summon a totem at your target location for 30 seconds. Your next three damage spells or abilities will cause the totem to radiate 1343 arcane damage to up to six enemies near the totem. And your next three healing spells will heal up to six allies near the totem for 1201 health. Obviously, these are based on my personal stats, um, and you can recast it, you know, so say if you're on the move in Mythic Plus or in PvP, if it looks like someone's going after it to kill it, 
um, you can, you know, put it somewhere new by recasting it. So that part's very cool. You know, we put that here. I can keep walking through these spears also to increase the duration of that mastery. See, it keeps getting um, increased. So that part's very cool. Got an ascendance proc and some back to back uh, aftershock procs. So I got to do three earth shocks there. Really cool. But uh yeah, that's Vesper Totem, really good on that um sixty second cooldown, you know, lasting for half that duration and pelting them with extra damage. Uh and you can see it, it was pretty good damage, right? Obviously, lava lava burst is going to be your main damage, and I did get, you know, like I said, three procs there for Earth Shock. Um, so it's just below the lava burst overload, which is pretty good, you know. So normal hits, 1866, averaging around 24 to 2459, and then it crit for up to 5400. So. Yeah, very, very cool. You know, and like I said, you can recast it. So if you're on the move, you know, like where that's at and you want to move, recast it over here. And you can keep doing that as long as the duration lasts. You can just keep moving it, you know, every, like, two globals or so. All right, so LE Legendaries, the Norganons one is just like, uh, the legendary, or legendary, I guess you could say that, but legion legendary, um, where it'll allow you to cast while moving, um, as long as you stand still first. Yeah, so Norganons will just stand here and cast. And then you can see, once we start moving, we'll be able to uh, cast on the move. You know, doesn't last very long, but uh, definitely nice uh, for Mythic Plus and stuff. You know, be, being able to move out of uh, some effect on the ground and whatnot, but still keeping up your damage. So, pretty cool. Alright guys, I wanted to show some potential ways you could burst with the Elemental Equilibrium Legendary. Um, and just to reiterate, direct fire damage increases your next frost by 30, and then your frost increases your next nature by 25, and then nature increases your next fire by 20. So there are several different ways you could do this. Um, but in my opinion, um, and I'm running Echoing Shock as well. I really like this talent. Uh, Aftershock is, you know, really good when the RNG works in your favor because you could get potentially like four back-to-back -back Earth Shocks with it. But this is more reliable on a short cooldown. Um, but yeah, there are a few ways to do this. So you deal direct fire and you're going to get your buff here, increasing your next frost. So you could then, if you're running Ice Fury, um, Ice Fury, and then if you Lava Burst again, you're going to get that back up for Frost. So you could keep alternating those between, you know, Flame Shock and um, Frost Shock during your Ice Fury, or Lava Burst, Frost Shock, Lava Burst, Flash, Frost Shock, just to um, make use of that. Um, frost buff 
you know, each time because every time you use a frost spell, when you have that buff, it's obviously going to drop. So you'd have to use a fire again to get the the frost back up. So for Ice Fury, um, that would be a good way to to weave those two together to get some burst. And all the while you're building up Maelstrom um, for the next part of your burst, which would be um, after you finish you know, that rotation, um, you'll have pretty high maelstrom, and after you frost shock, you know, off on that last ice fury, if you storm keeper into echoing shock, and then lightning bolt, it's going to be buffed by elemental equilibrium, um, it's going to hit twice, with echoing shock and the overload that's caused by stormkeeper is also going to hit twice because echoing shock is it does take into account your overloads and that's why um i think it's best when you can um to use it on something that overloads rather than earth shock because earth shock is a lot of damage but it's not going to overload so while stormkeeper is available i think it's best to use that in conjunction with Echoing Shock for Lightning Bolt, um, especially if you buff it, like I said, with a Frost Spell before that, because then it gets buffed even further through this Legendary. Um, but outside of Stormkeeper, you know, it would be situational, depending on whether you have Ice Fury, if you're running it, or, you know, Lava Burst, because either one of those can overload. Um, I wouldn't use um, Lightning Bolt for Echoing Shock outside of Stormkeeper because it's just not going to do the damage that Lava Burst or Ice Fury would. So, yeah, it depends on what you take here. A lot of times in PvP, people take Primal Elementalist because then you can use your Earth Ellie to pulverize stun targets, you know, and your your fire alley, you can use it to meteor targets. Um, you know, and sometimes people take surge of power, but you can really see the power of um, Ice Fury with this legendary, you know, and basically creating that chain reaction and kind of cascading those uh, burst spells together if you weave them properly. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't use Echoing Shock for um, for Earth Shock when you can avoid it, to be honest. And, you know, unless it's like you have full Maelstrom, you don't really have anything else, and the target's about to die, then sure. It's definitely something that you're going to have to commit to memory or, you know, use a weak aura, you know? probably a weak R wouldn't be bad to use because even if you do commit to memory what you just cast and what cycle it's on, you know, during Mythic Plus or during Arena, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? So your brain's already going to be full of information and whatnot. So having a weak R or something to kind of show you what cycle on you're on at the moment would definitely help big time. Another thing, too, with that, um, as far as running Ice Fury or not, like I know, you know, most people haven't run this for a while in PvP, um, but, you know, that could really make up for the loss in uh, instant lava bursts if you take control of lava. Because control of lava, is, you know, I mean, it's going to give you a lot of uh burst with lava burst a lot of damage but you just you lose that you know the instant cast lava burst but this could be a great way of you know getting more damage here out of lava burst but also still having you know instant uh damage available outside of earth shock so just something to consider there you know those two together it could be really really good a final note on uh min maxing with the 
elemental equilibrium Lego that we just showed and weaving in, you know, fire to frost to fire to frost and whether or not um, you use Echoing Shock with Stormkeeper or Lava Burst. Um, early on in the expansion, probably going to have, you know, pretty low crit. So it may be better, you know, early to use Echoing Shock with Lava Burst just because, you know, it's also going to uh, overload and it's a definite crit. Um, so just, you know, keep that in mind because of, you know, the extra damage we get with crits as Ellie. Um, you know, 250% instead of the usual 200. Combined with the fact that we have really low crit, um, it may be better, you know, and I'll test more, but it's it's very likely that it'll be better to use it for Lava Burst every time. Um, so just keep that in mind, but as we go through the expansion and, you know, get better stats, um, I think the initial, you know, min-maxing on the rotation would be the better way to go for sure. But, uh, anyway, yeah, I just wanted to kind of mention that. Um, the wind speakers. so whenever you Earth Shock, Gain Lava Surge and increase the damage of your next Lava Burst by 30%. So, Shock. Man, that one was over 10k. That was 10.6. So, you know, pretty nutty. Yeah, Earth Shock non-crit to start it all off did 30, almost 3,500. You know, and then you're getting hits of anywhere from 7k to 10.7k afterwards. So, yeah, some big potential there. You know, and like I said, Ice Fury on top of it, if you end up going that route. All right, so I've been testing out Venthyr with Ellie. Um, so we'll just quickly show Chain Harvest. And what that looks like and the damage. Um, also, I'm still running the Equilibrium um, Legendary because I love that one. But it's kind of weird. You can pre-buff it with uh, Ghost Wolf. I expected it with uh, Healing Surge because, you know, it's a, it's a nature spell. But, yeah, it even works with Ghost Wolf as you can see there. So, a little weird. But yeah, here's Chain Harvest. Yeah, you can see that it does really good damage. 16.7k um, total. And there were no crits. Last time I did it, like, they pretty much all crit. And it was absolutely just nutty. You know, like doing over 10k per hit and stuff. So, definitely a nice spell and great crit, crit synergy. You know, because if you crit, the cooldown gets reduced for each hit that crits. I'll probably, you know, go this route just because I want to do both PvE and PvP. And I feel like Vesper Totem is great. Um, but a little finicky when it comes to PvP, so. And thank you guys for watching so much. I uh, hope you got something out of it. And uh, catch you in the next one.